the gambaga was come according to oral history started around the 1900s by one imam baba imam baba was returning from a trip from nalerigu to gambaga when he met a group of people accompanying a woman with a child strapped at her back accused of being a witch it is said that she was going to be killed together with her baby on top of this mountain this mountain situated between nalerigu and gambaga was where alleged witches and wizards were executed saving the woman and her child from execution he took them back to gambaga and lived with them for a year after which he handed them over to the gambarana the chief priest of mamprugu for protection as the numbers increased they were put together in the shelter as we know it today i'm standing right in the middle of the popular gambaga which is come the perception is that it is only women who are here but behind me you can see that there is a man sitting here an indication that men are also here it is the desire of many that the camp should be closed down unfortunately it can never happen as we are told why because the women or the witches and wizards are not brought here they come themselves when they are chased out of their various communities what is needed rather is for all to help cater for the inmates here banished from their communities anyone accused of witchcraft run to this camp for security currently there are 82 women and a man here with some living with their children and grandchildren at the camp the women after they have been accused and they run to the camp for some time you will see them looking for their children we will have to even go sometimes we have to go to bring the kids to the camp because they'll be asking for them some too like if you are accused for instance if they accuse my mom and I still love my mom, but there's no way I, my mom could come to the village. The only way for me to do is to send my daughter or a son to take care of my mom at the camp. That's how some of them have their grandchildren there. The place that I will really love so much is their children and grandchildren's education, which I'm very so much concerned about because I don't want these children to, to be like their mothers or their parents one day. Some have lived here in the camp for over 38 years. The longest was for 41 years. She died recently. It's not about the women staying at the camp. They are even safe. I tell you what, so many people have died. They, they have killed a lot of people. Nobody hears it. And you know, we have also developed a strategy not to use the police. Not that we cannot use them, but when you use force, what they do is that they now kill these people silently, which you, you and I would not know. There was one man, I still feel it, when they had accused um, her daughter-in-law. And the man strongly came out again. He was very old. What they did was that they waited. When the woman had run, okay, but they waited while the woman was sleeping. They burned the place. They came and burnt it and locked the place and said that it was fire. There was one woman, they broke the leg. I got there to pick this woman and the whole of my body was shivering because of what I saw. One woman who was accused. And when she was accused, immediately they forced and gave her condemned to drink. You know, condemn that's weedicide or pedicide, the thing they used to pump this weeds and they will die off. She took the thing, came. Even though they did the tribal ordeal, the woman was not guilty. After they came to Gambarana Palace, she noticed that the woman was not a witch. By then they had already forced her to drink the condemn. What do you do then? This woman, after two weeks, died. There was another one. Uh, they accused her. That she was bewitching a young, young, uh, young boy. It was like chicken pox that got this young guy. So they asked the woman to suck the body of the child, of the, of the chicken pox. The child finally died and you know what, they washed the corpse and made the woman to drink the water. Over the years, the women accused of being witches have survived on the benevolence of others, especially churches and NGOs. We have been praying and hoping that we get sponsors coming to help us feed them. Apart from that, their health is a difficult thing. I don't know how we can supply them with food. Sometimes we do this to prevent them going to the market to try to pick scraps. I mean, those that are leftovers, and which if you see is very, it's very embarrassing. They also go to people's farms and because of the nature of how they want to feed, it becomes a problem. So we try to prevent all this. That is if we have to feed. You know, we used to rely on the health insurance. But these days, you sign it, the only thing to do is just to write the prescription for you. Go and buy. And that becomes our headache too. 
Another thing I think is a challenge generally there is water. Uh, we struggled for water. Finally, we got a borehole dug for us, but there was no enough water. Uh, you buy the machine inside, it pumps more, and the machine is broken down. Sometimes the Gambarana supports, uh, but sometimes he himself is a problem. These two block structures were put up by the district assembly, and this television set in their hall, donated by Pastor T.B. Joshua. A project dubbed Presby Go Home, started by the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, with support from the Church of Pentecost, Assemblies of God, and the Catholic Church, has seen 89 women and three men reintegrated with their families over the last 12 years. What we do is that we identify a, a community that gives us more women. We go to that community, we do the community entry and all sort of, to meet the chief and to tell the chief the dangers of banishing women like that. Uh, if we are able to convince the chief, the opinion, like the assembly member and other opinion leaders we think they are necessary in that community, we then call for a meeting for the whole community. And in that, when we are going, the chief representative is there, the chief of Gambaga, who is the custodian of the camp. Then we have the church's representative. Then we have the, the communities there are full of either Muslims or Christians. So we identify the number, then we send a man of God to also talk about the spiritual aspect. Then we now come with a medical person who also addressed to them. For instance, they think that barrenness is witchcraft. The person will educate them how some, even high fever to some extent. What should be the way forward? I wouldn't want it even to be closed down. I want us to use the gradual process and at the end of the day, there will not be anybody there. We have to do an education to advocate on behalf of the women, identify some of the issues or sometimes the sicknesses they often accuse women of. Mostly, relatives of the women here are accused of using black magic to cause misfortune in their communities. The women here come from 64 communities from the northern, the northeast, upper east regions. Managers say advocacy by all is what is needed to stop the brutalities meted out to perceived witches and wizards. Peggy Amadonko from Gambaga in the Northeast region for GBC News.